two types of elements we're going to deal with. I mean, basically, historically, just triangles and quads are what you use for 2D. Now, there are some, an area of research more recently where people have developed or come up with systematic ways to develop shape functions for n-gons, you know, basically polygons of n-sided. And these are useful because it's much easier to mesh something if, you can, if you're not restricted to quads and, and uh, triangles. But that's, that's an area of research, uh, pretty, you know, recent stuff, uh, especially when you go to 3D, like how to develop shape functions for in gons are is pretty difficult, but you actually have to compute them and then then you use them. All right, so so we have the we have the um, stiffness matrices. Um, we you have the right hand side vector. It's very straightforward. So really, the, the only thing left would be if we had a distributed load or distributed uh, external force or pressure, or you know, depending on the type of problem we're solving, temperature, whatever, then we need to evaluate an integral along the boundary. Okay? And so if you remember from last time when we developed the very generic model equation, you had this QI term. That's the integral over the boundary of an element times the shape function Q DS, where S is some line segment over the boundary. And we only need to calculate this where the boundary of the element intersects the boundary of the body. So what I mean by that is if, if you had a 2D body that you meshed up, in this case we'll do a very poor job with quadrilaterals. It's not necessary if you if you were to take, say, this element and that element and, and pull them out. And look at this what this Q looks like internally. We'll just, you know, say element one, element two. Well, these two guys are going to be equal to one another, and they're going to cancel, right? So this is like a balance of internal flux. And so you don't have to evaluate these integrals anywhere except, and so th what this means in words is where the boundary of an element intersects the boundary of the entire body. So this is the only place that you need to evaluate this integral. And what we'll see is that in two dimensions, the boundary or evaluating this, this integral is the same thing as evaluating a line integral just along that line. And you'll also see that the shape functions then reduce to the linear, well, to the one-dimensional shape functions, corresponding to the same degree of interpolation. So all we've talked about so far is just linear interpolation in 2D, right? So when we evaluate the shape functions along this line in 2D, they reduce to the one-dimensional linear shape functions. Right. So. Consider an element, we'll use a triangular element, height B with A, that's in a global system XY, global coordinate system XY but has a local coordinate system S and T. 
this distance is C. So X and Y are related to S and T through these equations. And we can solve for the unknowns, A1, B1, C1, A2, B2, C2, by evaluating at the triangle at, at the nodal locations. So if we call this node 1, node 2, node 3, we'd have x1, y1, x2, y2, x3, y3. And those, those correspond in S, S and T coordinates. So at S equals 0, T equals 0, we have that x equals x1 and y equals y1. At S equals A, T equals zero, what do we have? It's just X two, Y two. At S equals C, T equals B, we have X equals X3, Y equals Y3. And so from that, if we solve that system of equations, we have that X, S and T is equal to X1, So for our triangle, with node numbering 1, 2, 3, if we look at side 1, 2, so this side, and we look at what the shape functions are as a function of s, which really comes from, we, we originally had shape functions right, in terms of x and y, and now we have a relationship. So we can see that at s, along s and y equals 0, or t equals 0, rather, right, the shape functions reduce to 1 minus s over a s over a and 0. And if you look at these two, the first two, you should recognize them that they're the linear shape functions for a line segment. So when we were doing 1D problems, we developed sh the linear shape functions. That's what we got, right? We might have used x instead of s, but nevertheless, it's the same. 
right? So in general, for a triangle, QI is going to be the integral over side 1 to 2 in IS. plus the integral over side 2 to 3 plus the integral 3, 1 and I. And typically, there'll never be a scenario where all three of these are non-zero, right? Usually, because the triangle, any triangle is going to be connected at least on one side to the rest of the body, somehow. So worst case, you have to evaluate this if you had a load here and a load here. Or, you know, an external source. Worst case, you have to evaluate over two sides. All right, so in 2D, we have, we have stiffness matrices. We know how to evaluate the right-hand side, okay? So we basically have our element formulation, but What's the next step in finite elements? So we, we, have, we know the equations for the element, but to solve the whole problem, we have to do something we call, there's a word for it, assembly, right? So we have to do an assembly, right? So this can be a little tricky in 2D, and even trickier in 3D, but it's, it's trivial in 1D, right? If you, in 1D, if, if you, like we saw, it's really, easy to, no, to use the node numbering to your advantage, right? You just node number in sequence, right? And all of the adjacent elements, you'll just always have that overlapping term. You know, we saw that, right? But in 2D, it's, it's not so obvious. And so let's talk about how to do the assembly. <coughs> 